uh, Jenny Marshall's front lawn next to her house here. Jenny's a school teacher and uh, we're in North Carolina where she is running for Congress in the age of Trump trying to knock out a, an incumbent Republican and I'm here on a road tour because uh, I believe that unless the House becomes Democratic controlled in 2018, we're on the verge of more problems than ever. And so the first thing I wanted to ask you, Jenny, is just your name and where you're running for folks to know. Sure. My name is Jenny Marshall, and I'm running for Congress in the 5th Congressional District in North Carolina. You know, people who watch my videos on Facebook and YouTube and the rest know that I think the Trump era is an absolute and unmitigated disaster. And so, you know, I come to Jenny today as a total stranger. Literally, I just got out of the car. But this is my sister and your sister in a fight. And this fight isn't about politics. It's not about winning. It's about literally saving our country from an era of Republican-led chaos. Almost, uh, almost like the beginning of another civil war, if you could put it that way, where re rational Americans of all kinds have to band together. So I'm here talking to Jenny at my own expense, having flown down here and rented a car. I'm not rich, I'm just a writer and a painter. And Jenny is a school teacher, but it's going to be people like us who change this country and, and bring it back to sanity. So Jenny, talk, yep. why are you running? Well, because I want to put people's voices back into Congress. And after the events of this past November, I just couldn't look in my students' faces and not do everything in my power to make their futures better and our collective futures better. Mm. Because we have a representative in the 5th District that doesn't invest in us, doesn't invest in our communities, and um, passes all kinds of horrible legislation that really um, brings down our communities. Who, who, is, who is that person? Uh, her name is Virginia Fox, and she is, is, is the sitting incumbent. She's a Republican. Is she is she a, a fan of Donald Trump's? Absolutely. And so, you know, Absolutely. she's one of the reasons he's dangerous because nobody stops him from doing whatever he's going to do this morning. Correct. And I haven't checked the news today, so I don't know what happened last night. I mean, it's not like mm -hmm. other presidents where you kind of know where they are. It's day by mm -hmm. day, tweet by tweet, Correct. crazy by crazy. Yes. So what, what's your kind of vision for how you, what you, would you bring to Congress to try to stop some of this insanity? Well, in the 5th District, 50% of the households are low income or poverty level. Mm -hmm. So we really need to start investing in raising the minimum wage, mm -hmm. um, both for hourly workers and for tip service workers. And we need to invest in our infrastructure. We need to invest in things like green energy jobs and repairing roads and bridges and dams. I'm with Jenny talking about her political race. And Jenny, I want to ask you something. Mm -hmm. how, how do you... Um, as a mom, first of all, what, how, are you, how old are your children? Well, the oldest is 23 and the youngest is nine, gonna be 10. And how many kids do you have? I have seven. And so you've been teaching and you have seven children because just from my point of view, and this is, doesn't look very professional, but here's how I do it. Um, let me just say that from my point of view, the reason I'm here talking to you is for my grandchildren. And I mean that literally. And I bet the reason you're running is because you fear for your own children's future. Correct. Uh, they, you know, have dismal futures at this point. Uh, even people who go to college are not finding jobs in, in their degree fields, and things, things are dire. When you run against this Republican, in a way you're also running against Trump. You know, what, how would you sum up, if you had to tell somebody from another planet what happened to us, why, what happened to us? Well, who is Trump and why did he win? What is going on in this country? Well, we, we had a little bit of a discussion after I went back to school the next day after the election because I taught in a Title I priority school of mostly minority students. So we had that discussion, like how did Trump win? What was his messaging? And really what were people seeking? And his message was one of make America great again, which is one that you could really ascribe to anything that you believed in and it was, it was a positive thing for people who could just project what they wanted to see in the future. And sometimes we look in the past and we look at it in kind of rose-colored glasses and we forget some of the negatives and we accentuate the positive. And so I think a lot of people were looking to return to a time where they felt more safe, more secure, 
and more financially prosperous. And what we've found is with Trump is that he is looking out for his own best interest. He doesn't really care about the middle class. Um, he tends to have, you know, wide range of, of displays on Twitter of, you know, mocking people and um, saying rather, you know, pointed and sharp things to uh, foreign countries. And it's just not very diplomatic is what I would guess I would say. And uh, Virginia Fox also has a history of doing those same things and dismissing people who come to see her in her office and um, really playing on the fact that she's a, a free market. Everybody should just be able to do what they want, um, pay what they want, get rid of the minimum wage. Um, if you can afford health insurance, great. If you can't, sorry, um, but nobody should have to, you know, be responsible for you. And that's really the opposite of what really I think people stand for. We want to care for our neighbors. We want to care for our communities. We want people to um, feel like we're connected. And I think Trump and Virginia Fox's policies really disconnect people and drive wedges between us when we really should be coming together and really taking care of each other. I'm in the uh, campaign headquarters of Jenny Marshall in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And uh, such places as this are where... Our democracy is going to be saved from Donald Trump. It's not going to be in Trump Tower. It's right here, the world headquarters, the fancy office. This isn't Trump Tower. This isn't Trump Hotel. This isn't the Republican National Committee. This isn't the far right. This isn't the alt-right. This is an ordinary American called Jenny Marshall, a school teacher, a mom of seven people, who is running for the same reason I'm standing here today, having come down to interview her, and that is, I care about my three children and my five grandchildren that I do daycare for. And so Jenny and I have a lot in common because Jenny is a mom and a teacher and cares about this country because she cares about her children. But I really just want you to look around for a second before we talk to Jenny some more. Look, this is what's going on. This is democracy. Here's somebody working on a laptop who is, when you are a campaign, what's your title here? I'm the political director. So there's the political director. There are the postcards going to moms and dads. Here is some stuff, hand-lettered signs for people, Bernie and Owl. This is what actual democracy looks like. It doesn't look like lobbyists in Washington. It doesn't look like the big dollars attached to the Trump folks. This is what it looks like. And Jenny, mm -hmm. I just want you to talk a little more about your vision for this country in terms of being a mother and a teacher, and just a, a what, if I may, just call you an ordinary American, somebody who cares about the community. Sure. You're the kind of person I wish was representing us in Congress, and I think there's a lot of other people mm -hmm. who feel the same. Yeah. You're one, you're one of us. We just feel like Congress is out of touch. They are, they're almost wholly owned by big corporations and big moneyed interests and have drowned out our voice. So we want to put that voice back in Congress. That's why we're not taking any corporate money. Uh, it's all people funded and people powered. How can people help you? Well, obviously the first thing that people can do is go to um, our website, sign up to volunteer. If you're out of the district or too far away, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, share those with your friends. You and then donate some money and to your then, campaign. And, yeah, and then obviously donate to the campaign. Please, please do that. Yeah. Follow up. This is democracy at work. Ordinary Americans trying to take back our country from a white supremacist oligarchy. I know how nuts that sounds. It sounds like we're in Russia or something with Vladimir Putin. We almost are, okay? So do something about it. If you live in this area, what's the district? Uh, well, the district is uh, 10 full counties and the three precincts in Catawba County. So we have Avery County, Watauga County, Ash, Allegheny, Wilkes, uh, Alexander, Yatkin, Surrey, Stokes, and Forsyth County. If you live around here, volunteer, donate, do something about this, get Jenny elected, send somebody that represents all of us instead of just the people standing in Trump Tower spending $150 on a porterhouse steak to get close to this grifter and the Republicans who support him like Jenny's opponent and take back our country. Absolutely, because we can't wait for other people to do what we need to do. 
We can't wait for somebody else to donate. We can't wait for somebody else to volunteer. We have to do that. We have to do one more thing. We have to walk, knock one more door. We need to make one more phone call. We need to make one more donation. Find a campaign that you're interested in and that will put you back in power and get involved. I'm on Jenny Marshall's back porch, and this is an ordinary back porch of a non-elitist person like you and me. It was refreshing. I wanted to shoot in Jenny's kitchen and she said, hey, listen, with seven kids, I haven't cleaned up yet. I don't want people to see dirty dishes. To which I was saying, God bless America, that there's still a mom and a teacher who worries about dirty dishes in her kitchen who's running for Congress. I mean that seriously. It almost brought tears to my eyes because it's so far away from the BS of Trump Tower and all these elites. I. You know, I really hope and pray you win, please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't have a housekeeper. It's it's all just us doing, you know, what we need to do. And we just spent 10 days at the Winston-Salem Dixie Classic Fair, 13-hour shifts a day. And, you know, the house is a little messy, but, you know, we, we're living it and we're, that's the campaign life. Tell me what you think your shot is here. Do you do you have a chance to, to take back a seat from the Republicans in this election in 2018? I think it's going to be the yeah. biggest and most important election of my lifetime, except for the one we just lost to Trump. Listen, mm -hmm. let me tell you something. I'm an independent. I'm not even registered as a Democrat. Mm -hmm. so I, I have no dog in this fight except my country and my grandchildren. I care about them. I, I'm heartbroken at what's happened. I right. don't, you know, this is just horrible to be represented by a joke. The thing that boggles my mind, Jenny, more than anything else and why your race is so important is that I understand Trump. There's a lot of idiots in the world. They're goofballs, egomaniacs, horrible people. What I don't understand is the way the Republican Party has sold out to him. And people have, like Paul Ryan and the others, who've gone along with this guy. That's what I don't get. I don't get that. You know, I get the village well, idiot standing there screaming yeah. at the sky. What I don't get is if the whole town goes along with him. I think they just are happy that there's a Republican in the White House, and no matter who it was, they were going to be happy with that. Um, I don't think they're necessarily happy with Trump, but I don't think, you know, I think the opposite, if it was a Democrat in office, that would have been worse for them. Yeah. So um, we meet a lot of Republicans who do not support Donald Trump, but are grateful that Hillary Clinton didn't get in office so that's unfortunate but that's that's the reality of what we live with yeah and it, it just seems to me though that the situation we've got is so much worse than anybody could have anticipated yeah. that you've got two missions running for Congress one is to good policy mm -hmm. but the other is to stop a disaster just by simply putting a spoke in the wheels and what else can be done you know correct me if I'm wrong but except for the election in 2018 and getting a majority in Congress again I don't see what we can do about Donald Trump except some crazy hope for of impeachment or something. Correct. There, I mean, there and is nothing the, else. The elections in 2018 are the most important thing that we need to be focusing on, um, unless you live in a state that is heavily gerrymandered like North Carolina's, in which both the national and the state legislature races are extremely important, and they need to be working in tandem in order to um, put some sanity back into the legislature. But for us, it's about unseating Virginia Fox and also helping um, take back some seats in our state legislature. So we need to be working together and with everybody's help, not only just in North Carolina within the 5th District, but across the United States. Because we know that the people that are working in Congress do not legislate, legislate in a bubble. They are affecting everybody. So what Virginia Fox votes yes on affects the people in Wyoming as well as California and so on. So we really need to put some sanity back in Congress and, uh, you know, we really need people to get out and vote and, you know, do one more thing. Yeah, do one more thing. Well, well put, really well put. Well, the biggest thing um, for our campaign seems to be the economy. People in the 5th District are overworked and underpaid. We have people, 50% of the Households in the 5th District are low income or poverty level, and that is just unacceptable. We have working families who can't make it. There are people working multiple jobs just in order to provide rent and electricity and food. But we need better jobs. We need people in Congress to invest in our communities, both in the 5th District and around the United States, because this is not just a 5th District issue. My opponent, Virginia Fox, voted no to raise a minimum wage back in 2007. 
She also voted yes just this year to have your internet service provider use your browsing history to make a profit. She also voted yes to repeal and replace Obamacare when she knew it was going to kick 28 million people off of their health insurance, one out of every seven here in the 5th District.